Gebser's major thesis was that the stress and chaos in Europe from 1914 to 1945 were the symptoms of a structure of consciousness that was at the end of its effectiveness, and which heralded the birth of a new form of consciousness. The first evidence he witnessed was in the novel use of language and literature. He modified this position in 1943 so as to include the changes which were occurring in the arts and sciences at that time. His thesis of the failure of one structure of consciousness alongside the emergence of a new one led him to inquire as to whether such had not occurred before. His masterwork, Ursprung in Gegenwart, which is German for origin and present, is the result of that inquiry. It was published in various editions from 1949 to 1953 and translated into English as the ever-present origin, working from the historical evidence of almost every major field, e.g. poetry, music, visual arts, architecture, philosophy, religion, physics, and other natural sciences, Gebser saw traces of the emergence, or efficiency, and collapse, or deficiency, of various structures of consciousness throughout history. Gebser's theory is that human consciousness is in transition, and that these transitions are mutations and are not continuous. These jumps, or transformations, involve structural changes in both body and mind. There are a number of these levels, the archaic, the magic, mythical, mental, integral structure. Gebser notes that the various structures of consciousness are revealed by their relationship to space and time. For example, the mythical structure embodies time as cyclical or rhythmic and space as enclosed, whereas the mental structure lives time as linear, directed, or progressive, and space becomes the box-like homogeneous space of geometry, a vacuum. But just as each consciousness structure erupts, it also eventually becomes deficient. The deficient form of the mental structure Gebser called the rational structure. Of particular significance is his realization that previous consciousness structures continue to operate. The rational structure of consciousness seeks to deny the other structures with its claim that humans are or ought to be exclusively rational. The rational structure is known for its extremes, as evidenced in various nothing-but statements. Extreme materialism claims that everything is nothing but matter, nothing but atoms. Philosophy, the love of wisdom, is replaced with instrumental reason, the ability to make. Um, and in this sense, philosophy is something that was only present in the mythical structure of consciousness. What we call philosophy today has turned into instrumental reason. Contemplation, or looking inward, is devalued in relation to what one can do. Wise men fall out of favor and are replaced by the man of action. Successes in, technolo successes in technologically reshaping matter offer solutions to some problems, but also give rise to problems of their own making. Mechanized slaughter of the of two world wars and the new atomic weapons exemplified and symbolized the expression of the ontology of the rational mental structure. Living becomes hard to bear in such a consciousness structure. Some saw the causes of this despair as a lack of values or ethics. Gebser saw that it is the very consciousness structure itself which has played out to its inherent end. He saw that its metaphysical presumptions necessarily led to this ethical dead end. A value-free ontology, like materialism, leads of necessity to living without value. Any attempt to remedy the situation by a return to values would ultimately fail. In other words, the atheistic rationalist cannot become religious again. And... Um, and, uh, and just uh, start living again as a religious person, as someone in the mythical structure of consciousness. They can't just adopt what they've already moved through. They have to move on to some new structure of consciousness. Um, it was through this very quagmire 
of the decline of the West that Gebser saw the emergence of a new structure of consciousness, which he termed the integral. So theist develops into atheist, and atheist must, uh, in a sense, synthesize the theist position and the atheist position and become integral, see through both atheism, valuelessness, and value latency in the mythical structure as a theist, um, and become integral. The integral consciousness structure was made evident by a new relationship to space and time. In the second part of his work, Gebser set out to document the evidence that he saw throughout various human endeavors. Of note here were the incorporation of time in physics, the attempts to paint time in the visual arts, and the like. Gibson noticed that the integral structure of consciousness was largely witnessed as the eruption of time into the fixed reality of the mental structure. For Gebser, dualistically opposed and static categories of being gave way to transparency. Transparency points to how it is that the one is given through and always along with the other. For centuries, time was viewed as having distinct categories of past, present, and future. These categories were said to be wholly distinct from one another. Of course, this created all kinds of difficulties regarding how beings moved from one category to the other, from present to past, for example. What integral awareness notices is that, though we may utilize categorical thinking for various purposes, we also have the realization that time is an indivisible whole, that various beings in the present are crystallized from the past, and which also extend into the future. In fact, without already having an integral awareness, one could have no notion of time as past or present, etc. Without the awareness of the whole, one would be stuck in a kind of not knowing, of an always only now not connected to any sense of past or future. Even the mental awareness which divides this whole into distinct categories could not have become aware of those categories without an awareness which was already integral. Awareness is already integral. Gebser introduced the notion of presentiation, which means to make something present through transparency. An aspect of integral awareness is the presentiation or making present of the various structures of consciousness. Rather than allowing only one, the rational, structure to be valid, all structures are recognized, presented, one through the other. This awareness of and acceptance of the various structures enables one to live through the various structures rather than to be subjected to them or lived by them as the literal German is translated. To realize the various structures within one's language and habits, and even within one's own life and self, is a difficult task. But Gebser says that it is a task that we cannot choose to ignore without losing ourselves. This means that our so-called objective thinking is not without consequences, is not innocent, that to live objectively means to give life to the horrors of nihilism combined with the know-how of highly efficient weapons. It means that objectivity gets applied to engineering humanity, whether it is in the behavioral sciences or the physical sciences. He asks of us whether or not we have, as of yet, had our fill of such horrors. Are we willing to settle into the comfort of our daily life, or to take on the process of change? He offers as a guiding note that, that just as there is also a time to act, there is the much-neglected time of contemplation. In a world where know-how is overvalued, simple knowing must also be nurtured in contemplation. Furthermore, he knew that thought was never simply a mental exercise restricted to one's writing. He calls upon us to realize that we are what we think. Gebser traces the evidence for the transformations of the structure of consciousness, structures of consciousness as they are concretized in historical artifacts. He sought to avoid calling this process evolutionary, such, since any such notion was illusory when applied to the unfolding of consciousness. Biological evolution, as Gebser noted at length, was an enclosing process, 
a process that particularized a species to a limited environment. The unfolding of awareness is, by contrast, an opening up. Any attempt to give a direct a direction or goal to the unfolding of awareness is illusory in that it is based upon a limited notion of time, the mental rational structure's notion of time, which is linear and hence implies progress. To be sure, Gebser was fully aware that any notion of human progress was already played out. He notes that to progress is to move toward, but is also a moving away from. And he knew that the question as to the fate of humanity is still open, that for it to become closed would be the ultimate tragedy, but that such a closure remains a possibility. Our fate is not assured by any notion of an evolution toward any kind of ideal way of being. It's our responsibility, in other words, to become integral.